Welcome to the Scale with Pros podcast with your host, myself, Cody Barton, the number one place to be if you want to build a business beyond yourself. And for all the resources we talk about in the show, make sure to head over to scalewithpros.com. All righty, so let's go ahead and dive in with today's guest, my good friend, Raphael. And he has, you know, a really, really uh, refined, and, and he's actually, he doesn't know this, but he's somebody that I looked up to uh, when I was, you know, first starting my real estate journey with, you know, how systematized he was um, and, you know, like his CRM build outs and things that he did, uh, you know, when I was first getting to know him. And so um, it's really cool bringing Raphael to share with you guys today. Uh, I'm not going to steal his thunder on his story of what he's been able to do. But, you know, he has, you know, a real estate business. He's, you know, grown a team to a dozen, dozen plus team members and, you know, he's really done some amazing things. But, Raphael, thank you so much for being here and hanging out and sharing value with, you know, the Skill with Pros community. Share with everybody, you know, how, how did you get to this point? You know, I'm not going to go into all of all of the things you're doing right now, but how did you get started in business and, you know, to this point where your business is at today? Bro, well, first off, thank you for having me, man. Always, uh, always a pleasure. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we go way back. I remember it, it's like over the last four or five years, it's been crazy. It's been a ride, right? I think for, for all of us in that little uh, you know, click where we, we we were just hustling through stuff at the beginning and trying to figure stuff out, and 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 then things just kind of started taking off and moving really really quick. So yeah, it's been it's been fun and uh, and it's a pleasure being here, man. Thanks for the invite. Appreciate it. Awesome, um, yeah. I start. I got into real estate. What was it? Uh, 2009, uh, fixing and flipping. I mean, uh, before that, I I had a uh, or while. Um, in 2009, from 2007 to 2014, I had another business. I had a transportation business. So I was working on, on, on building that up. It was a non-emergency medical transportation business. Prior to that, I, I, uh, I was a paramedic firefighter. So it's kind of like the fire department took me to that uh, uh, transportation business because it was, it, it was an ambulance service. So that kind of led into the entrepreneur space. And while I was there, I, I, I put together some cash and I wanted to, you know, uh, diversify a little bit and and I knew how to swing a hammer because I worked construction during high school and college and all that stuff so it's that was kind of like the 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 route that I took right just yeah the, the known path and and did a couple of flips totally different than working construction so so I didn't I didn't do great on the first few flips I just didn't know what I didn't know but it was a journey after that I found um you know wholesaling uh, because I started looking at the settlement statements and I started to see like assignment fees and whatnot. I, eventually, I asked one of the guys that I was getting the houses from, and he was like, "Yeah, that's what you paid me for 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 getting you the the property." I was like, "Man, how do I do that?" Right? So, I, <laughs> so I I went into uh, into the flipping paper, you know, type of business. And I've always been I feel like systematic to a point. I had to, right? Especially with that transportation business. Mm. It, like you couldn't drive two vehicles at the same time, so you ha I had to figure out, you know, how to manage, you know, how to track and, and accountability, and there was a lot of logistics that went into, to the transportation business. So that kind of gave me the um, foresight, right? Like you can't you can't really operate a business um, if if you don't have you know some type of systematic approach to it. It's kind of you know what got me got me going in that in that train of thought. At the same time, I went back to school and started working on my my degrees and. And they look really nice on the wall and everything. I really don't like it's it's as entrepreneurs, right? We get skills and 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 uh, the college. I mean, the college stuff is nice, but it's it's not a must-have. I can say though that it, it it allowed me to see things from from both perspectives. So I I use it, but I use it on my own on my own businesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, what what's your business compiled of right now? You know, it's the it's the wholesale. It's some flip flipping and and what else what else are you doing right now i own a brokerage uh, i have agents that do traditional you know traditional real estate and whatnot most of them also do uh some type of real estate investment so i have that so, but I'm, I'm pretty active right now most of the stuff that i'm doing really is, is on the wholesaling side and on the coaching uh, side so those two really take up most of my time the process of building up or scaling the coaching business so that's pretty exciting i went back into the trenches at the beginning of the uh well actually at, towards the end of last year and we went national on the on the wholesaling side. So when you go from one market to 
a lot of markets you have to go back to the drawing board and figure out it's just a different type of operation so there was a lot of pieces that weren't holding you know holding up i thought it would but uh but as i i tapped into different markets you know higher volume and the marketing was different the conversations were different the intricacies of the business itself changed right so so i had to go back to the drawing board and and re-engineer acquisitions dispo lead generation all that stuff so that's kind of what took the the first half of this year and right mm-hmm. now it's really that um that transition into into scaling the coaching side of it yeah i love that so so now you know with your businesses you're doing obviously you know over over a million dollars a year in in revenue um, I do want to ask this because there are there are people that are listening out there that are like, do I just stay this solopreneur or do I go this route of, you know, building a team and growing something more beyond themselves and, you know, where they can obviously do more revenue, but then there are, you know, more more team members, you know. So I, I guess the question for you is, one, why did you choose to go this path? I mean, sp- let's just say like with your real estate business of, you know, you could just do it all yourself and stay smaller, but then just have to do everything um, versus, you know, building the teams that you have for your company. What what was maybe that deciding factor for you that maybe could help someone else, you know, feel, uh, feel that encouragement of like, okay, you know, I, 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 I could, I am making the right decision by transitioning and starting to build a team. Such a good question, man. I, it's, uh, I don't think it's a matter of not being able to do the things. A lot of times, you know, as entrepreneurs or solopreneurs even, right, we have that, uh, that, that um, the need for control because it's our ball of wax, it's our baby. And delegating, mm-hmm. letting go of some tasks feels like you're, you're you know, betraying the business or, <laughs> you know, it feels like this big daunting thing, a uh, scary thing. Um, but it, so it wasn't the doingness of, of – um, of you know taking the actions and everything it was the fact that i had to do it all the time so to yeah. me that was it it was like cool i mean i can lock a deal i can sell a deal i can do the marketing i can do all that stuff because i have to go through the gauntlet right mm-hmm. but heck man doing it all the time it, it's like okay where's my life am i living to work am i working to live you know it, it's uh, so it be you know it began uh, it began to make sense I, I feel like we go through through um through stages, right? As as we we evolve, and uh, you know, you have the survival stage that you know there, you have certain prerogatives, right? And it's like, okay, cool. I gotta make the mortgage. I gotta pay the car. I gotta just have enough to to make sure that we're you know the family's fed and whatever. And then when you have this certain security, you start to have different um, different priorities, and, and it's like, you know, almost like waking up and and you know scrubbing your eyes and, and you know seeing the light. It's like, man, there's other things I should be doing or focusing on. Uh, so I kept getting pulled back into into the same pattern of, of doing the tasky things. And I eventually got tired of it. Um, in my previous business, I did get burned out um, yeah. because I was doing everything. I mean, I was trying to dispatch. I was trying to, you know, set up, uh, the, you know, the contracts. And and I was just stuff that I, I, I was hiring people, but I wasn't allowing them to perform because <clears throat> I was a bottleneck. Um, so that, you know, taught me a big lesson. I got to a point where... I didn't want to show up to the office. My energy was through the floor, uh, you know, and it's not me, you know, it's like I started to, to not recognize who that person was. And I was like, man, this is not like, this is not healthy. So, I mean, that was a big thing for me. It just kind of, you know, it landed on the side of awareness for me and, and, and going forward, it was like, you know, let's try something different. Let's try to empower people around me, use the vehicle of the businesses that I'm building, uh, you know, for their, their own goals. Right. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a byproduct of people succeeding within you know, within my, my, my ventures and, and, um, and it started, started working out, you know, way better. And then, uh, I feel like one of the biggest moments was, I don't know, I was traveling, I was in Costa Rica or something. It was one of the first few times that I stepped, really stepped away for a couple of weeks and, and I was like, oh, let's see if this thing doesn't break. And I'm sitting at the beach and, and just like glancing at the emails every now and then, you know, doing the thing. Cause I, I, I was kind of nervous. Um, but I was intentionally, you know, staying away from calling the team. I was like, I'm not going to call him. I'm not going to do it. So I had to force myself not to micromanage there for a minute. And then sure enough, dude, they, like, they're closing deals. They're locking deals. They're doing the thing. And I'm at the beach over there. And it's just like seeing the closing statements and, and all that stuff. I was like, this is, this is it. Like, this is perfect. Let's do more of this. Uh, so I feel like <laughs> <laughs> once you get a taste for it, um, I was like, okay, cool. Like, I'm going to go heavier on this side. Like, I like this better. <laughs> than yeah. killing myself all the time oh my god i i love that you know the uh that realization of 
you know, you will forever have to do all of the things and be everything to all of the things in your business if you don't make that transition. And, and like you're saying, it's like once you get a taste of what it feels like and what it can be like when you have the right people on your team and you have the right processes and systems and uh, things in place for the company, uh, what you're able to really do and like what, what type of results you're able to get um, and, and what the life can become, you know, I, I remember this was probably like fall of 2020. So it was like very like COVID was just like kind of finishing. I don't know whatever you, whatever you say finishing up means, but like you could travel season, to some place. Season and, one. <laughs> yeah. Season one of COVID was over, you know, before season two, yeah. and, and depending on what state you lived in. But so I, I remember that fall, like I had just been getting, you know, better at having our teams be able to function without me being as involved as much. And so I remember I went on this trip to Mexico. I went to Tulum for a week and just, you know, visiting. It was for a friend's birthday. And so we went down there and I remember telling Hael, which is my fiance for those listening, I, I was telling her, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm just going to put my phone in the, in the safe in our hotel room. And I was like, I'm just going to leave it in there for the whole week and just see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> see if it doesn't melt. <laughs> and I was like, I just have never done that before. And I was like, you're going to have your phone, so I don't need mine. And let's just see. You know, so I literally remember I put my phone in the safe at, in our hotel room and locked it up. And we went out for the whole day that day. And I was just like, oh, this feels weird. I feel like naked right now. Like I'm just used to always looking at my phone. I'm like, what is something going to happen? Like, is everything going to be okay? And I, w I got through that whole week. I didn't really get on my phone at all. Like I just would check it at the end of the day, just seeing, making sure, you know, f more so family related things, but I just, you know, checked out and the week went by and I went home and I was like, wow, like this is, this is pretty great. Like, you know, things all, all kept going. There was nothing that was needed from me during that time. And, you know, so I've, I've always, you know, ever since then looked at, okay, any business that I'm involved in, I, I have to be able to set up to be a, a couple of things. One is location independent, so I can do anything from anywhere. I don't want to be stuck somewhere. Like I'm doing the, you know, this recording in my office, like we have an office here in Mesa, but I don't have to be at the office, you know, it's like so that, that was one thing. And then the other is I don't want to be the linchpin or bottleneck for, you know, the major functions of the day to day. So I can actually leave and like, you know, do other things in life and, you know, things still go. Obviously, as you know, the leader, you know, certain things aren't moving maybe as fast when you're gone, but it's like, I'll take that over being having to be stuck in a certain location, doing a certain thing every day, you know? A hundred percent, dude. I think it comes down to empowerment and it, and that's nerve wracking when you, when you let go of your phone and you just kind of put stuff away, like you're, you're, I don't know. It feels like you've left the kid forgotten somewhere <laughs> and it's like, I hope they're okay. Uh, but it's, uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, I think it's part of the empowerment process for me. What I learned was the more confidence I instill in the team. Um, and I'm big on, on SOPs, on KPIs, on accountability. I mean, right now, I mean, the business is pretty dialed in. I made a, made a point of, of dialing in every single step for any new thing. I mean, we have standard operating procedures and, and there's a certain protocol. I brought that over from the fire department because that's where I first saw it, right? We would have SOPs for fires. We would have, yeah. you know, pre-plans for buildings that were around the fire station just in case something happened. So, so that thought process just kind of, you know, translated over to, to the business side. I, I understood it. I, I knew it. But my need to control, because I had this big fear of loss, like I don't want to fail in the business, I don't want to let go, it was more of a me thing. I realized, like, shit, man, the, 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 the process is there. Like, it's already mapped out, and they can follow it. I'm just not letting them. Like, I was the biggest um, barrier to, to, like, their own performance, their own success. Um, and so, so gradually, I mean, I, I, I had to burn out, really, to, to feel it. And then let them actually get in there and, and, and start performing, man, to the point where, where when that happened, I mean, I, I, was, I think I was 20, around 25, 26. And uh, literally, I, I would walk into, into my dispatch and my dispatchers would say, dude, just get out of here. Like, leave, leave us alone. Like, we're fine. Um, and, uh, you know, it was really cool because my team was, you know, picking up the weight and all that stuff. But it, it also, in retrospect, it was like, okay, I'm, I'm doing too much. Like, it, it's, we got to let, we got to build it and then let the thing run. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, getting, getting the right people in and then just letting them, letting them do their thing. You know, that's, 
that's one of the things that I've really been working on over the last couple of years is as a leader, focusing more on how can I lead more by outcomes versus yeah. like by individual like tasks of things, you know? So like one of the things that I started doing and now that I, you know, we have and I just give to any in any department or if it's, you know, somebody that's going to be leaving a department and especially for departments, I don't really understand that well, like technology. I'm not really great at technology. And so what I've done is I like I'll write out these like success guides. And so the success guides are like a fifth grader could read it and understand that all of these things must be true for this to be working well. So like I'll write out all of these things that I'm like you know, the website should work like this. And this is how I would know if, it, if I was happy with it. And like all of these just bullet pointed out things of if for this department to be doing well, all of these things must be true. And, you know, same for sales or same for marketing or same for operations. And that is how I've gotten towards, you know, management is, you know, not micromanaging tasks or micromanaging the details, more of here's what success looks like in this department. And as the leader of that department, you can run it however you'd like, as long as it's within our company's mission, our vision, our core values. It fits within the success criteria that I'm looking for yeah. and that these KPIs are withheld for the department. Outside of that, I don't care what you do. I just Go make sure if all of those other things are true, beautiful. I'm happy. <laughs> I love that, man. We used to, uh, <clears throat> so we had a, it go, like it reminds me, right? We had a critical, critical criteria uh, on, on SOPs and on the tests and, and, you know, any skill, you know, related, you know, thing that we're doing back then, even at the fire department, you had critical criteria that you had to hit. Uh, and if you miss that, like nothing, nothing else, nothing else counts, right? So there are certain things I feel like they're key to to whatever whatever lane you're in. I mean, I've seen you operate, dude. You're stellar. You're a super super bright guy, and and the way that you, I mean, that you uh, set up, you know, things for for I feel like you allowed to to uh, for that automation to happen without the need of of constrict, you know, constraining um, the path to it, which is pretty it's pretty stellar. I've always had uh, I feel like an issue with that. Right. I'm, I'm more of a, like, I'm going to architect the entire thing and then just tweak it as I go. Um, yeah. But yeah. yeah like needing end, to be in like the entire wireframe of all of it. Yeah. It, it's, you know, some people like playstations and I like, I like doing that kind of stuff. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll go to yeah. town with an organizational chart for like days. Uh, and uh, I don't Dude, know. Just... <laughs> I, so I would do that more when I've had, so I, I've had the same business coach for a year and a half and like, he's beat that out of me more, more so <laughs> where he, he's like, you know, we talk about minimum viable done. He's like, we're like minimum viable done. It's like not minimum viable, perfect, not minimum viable. This is what uh, there's still like 17 more iterations. So like, I've just released more and more of like, you know, is this version of the thing that I just did enough to release it? And then I could iterate on it in the future. If so, just release the thing. Just keep, just move forward with it and be okay that it'll never be perfect because the perfect version you come up with now in three weeks from now, you'll look back at change. and notice yeah. things that need to be changed. It becomes a living <laughs> document. No, dude, it's funny you mentioned that because I, I, I can't remember exactly where it is that I picked this up. I was reading a book on Leonardo da Vinci and this concept came up and, and the thing was you build something to 80% and then you release it and then you let it do its thing and then it's going to come back and when when it comes back you're like you're going to have edits for, for example like an sop right uh or a new, i don't know a new process for whatever like all right it's not perfect but i feel like i don't know 75 80 percent comfortable with this thing let's just roll it out um and i used to sit there and just want to have everything dialed in and and i mean then get caught up by analysis paralysis and you name it dude like i feel like it starts losing energy right so you hit that point of uh, diminishing results where you keep doing 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 now the progress is not there it's just like doesn't compound like it did at the beginning and yeah so I, I started doing that and i mean it, it kind of became a habit and 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 i like like now i i just kind of switch my perspective around it i've never been a perfectionist really but but I, i've always been very strict with the way that i operate like if i if i put something out like i want it to be good so sometimes i would hold on to things longer um or you know delegation you know for example being one of them longer than i should and that kind of stuff like now it's i'll build something to 80 percent, put it together and then just roll it out and i love that part i, I love that part of business to me that's that's the play part uh, the engineering of it so it, it's it's uh i mean it becomes a cool space 
you know, for me to operate in. So I enjoy that. You know, one of the things I was thinking about is like, I have a really great executive assistant now. And I think about certain things like I'm transparently for everyone listening. I'm not great at like putting together really well, like written documents per se of like, I kind of like my brain thinks in scrambled spaghetti when I, when I'm like trying to put something together. So like, I'll know exactly what I want to create and I could see the picture of what I want to create and I'll like slop like 60% of it together on like a document and I'm like, this looks like crap, but it has the entire point that I'm trying to get across. And now I just, I'll give that to like my EA Rochelle or, or give it to, you know, my head of operations, Adriana. I'm like, Hey, this is what I'm trying to get across with this. Like, here's like my mush of ideas. Can you take that? And then like, make it presentable for other humans to actually want to look at. And then like, yeah. they make it look great. And I'm like, Oh, this is <laughs> awesome. You know, <laughs> so, Yay, awesome. otherwise I would take so long or I would leave things undone. I would get things like 60% done like that. Cause I'm always good at polishing them off to like be well done. So I, but you know, that was just a, an area where I'm like, well, if I'm not good at that, I'm just going to get it to that and then give it to someone else to make it look pretty and presentable. <laughs> I, I have, I have one project left like that. I have one, <laughs> one, I can, I can, I can, I wrote a book, uh, and I felt like, I, you know, I'm like 50, 60% comfortable with it. And it's been sitting on my shelf. I haven't gone back to it. It's like, no, the thing's going to get done eventually, eventually hasn't. Right. But I feel like, I don't know, sometimes we have, like, we have the tendency to, to do that, especially when you're a creator and you're, like, popping up ideas. We're in this, um, you know, troubleshooting mode or, or creative mode uh, most of the time because, I mean, I, I, I didn't have a blueprint for the businesses that I built. Yeah, you know, you didn't have a blueprint for, you know, for, for your stuff. So we're, we're trying to figure things out as we go. And, and sometimes it can get super loud you know, when it comes to, to the thought process of it. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. So I, I do want to ask you this. So I, I was writing this down, like before we got on, I was like, one of the things I wanted to ask you was, so growing from, you know, that, like that first, maybe like a hundred K in business, like the first, you know, six figures a year to o getting over a million a year in revenue. Now thinking back to that journey, what is something that you wish someone had told you on your journey towards that, that would have helped you do it faster? Think bigger, like no mm -hmm. doubt in my podcast. And I remember asking you this, this question is like, you know, when, if, if you ran into your 17 year old self, what question would you ask that kid? Um, I, you know, when I asked myself that question, it was like the thing that came, kept coming back was think bigger, think bigger, think bigger. My think was always kind of constrained and, and not by mm -hmm. anybody else. It was just, uh, you know, the, the, I, I grew up in a small town, grew up in a mobile home. So, so like my, my think of possibilities wasn't that broad. I mean, that was it. When I moved to Phoenix and I started, you know, having conversations with people who own different businesses, they were in different industries. Uh, definitely when I started tapping into masterminds, when I launched the business over here, so I had to, you know, find seats at, at tables that, that, uh, that were different than the stuff that I was used to. Like my thing started to stretch little by little, right? But I feel like that was the biggest battle for me. Going back to that financial thermostat, I mean, I thought I, I, I growing up, I mean, for the longest time, even, even when I was still at the fire department, my financial thermostat was capped. So, I mean, I, it's like, oh yeah, if I make a hundred K, I can retire, you know, type of stuff. And, and it's like, when you become an adult and you start spending money on, <laughs> on gas, life, insurance, life, and life <laughs> it's like, oh, let me go back to the, to the math on this real quick. So yeah, for me, for me, it was definitely that I had a challenge with a big think. Um, yeah. I've always been good at, at, uh, you, drafting an idea and then executing on it. Like that, that, that really hasn't been an issue, uh, for me, but I like the ideas weren't big enough. You know what I mean? And now like, I'll come up with something that's like, okay, this puts me out of my comfort zone. Like I'm, I feel a little nervous. Let, let's like, it let's go. It feels good. Yeah. So, so someone listening and they're like, I'm maybe I'm not thinking big enough. Like. How do you fix that? Like, what do you like? What are some things that someone could do to actually start going to work on that, you know, thought process of how do I think bigger? How do I believe bigger? You know, because there's part of those two parts to it, right? It's like the thinking bigger, but then believing that you can do that as well. I think that, you know, is another component. So, how how would you tell someone to go to work on that? What would you recommend? It comes down to the to the tables that you're sitting down at. It really does. Uh, I mean, be intentional about putting yourself in, in groups that are gonna uh, they're gonna make you feel inadequate, man, and uncomfortable. I feel like I had my shit together until we started sitting down at masterminds. 
It's like, yeah. oh, <laughs> wow, this person has it all dialed in. And they had some aspect of it dialed in, right? But some other aspects, oh, like, I feel like I'm doing better. But you start to see different perspectives. You start to see different stories, per perhaps, right? Different stories of success. And it's like, man, this, 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 like, I'm shooting for, I don't know, for just imagery, right? I'm shooting for three deals a month. And they're doing 20. Like, how, how does that work? Right. So you get to the point where it's like, OK, follow that path. And then and then after a while, it's funny, but I was talking to one of my um, one of my students and I, I was um, this week. We were going down the, um, the the stages of growth right for the business. He was able to track it back to like stage one where you're in the startup stage and, and the thought process behind it to that scaling stage where you're doing 15 plus deals. I mean, he's been with me for a while. So we like, oh, you remember this stage? Yeah, yeah I remember that. And then you remember this stage when you went to three to seven and then the thought process was different. Oh, this is when I joined the mastermind. Oh, Oh, this is when you scaled from you know here and then you hit 10 is like so it's it's almost like you can almost map it but at the end of the day it comes down to to being intentional about where you're going to be sitting at right and when i say that is like find meetups find people who are in your same space and do i mean put together a meetup if you, there's nothing in your in your area the vertical that we i mean that we tapped into was you know for the most part real estate until we started buying businesses and but even if it's you know whatever it is right if it's a different industry you can't find people who are in that similar lane that are crushing it and, and and are more than willing to collaborate and squat up and level up. I mean, we've that's that's been really, I mean, our MO, I think, since 2018. I talk to, you know, newer entrepreneurs sometimes, and, you know, we have these conversations, and, you know, you could definitely tell the folks that have not been in, you know, masterminds or at, you know, events or have, have had coaches or, you know, really done a lot of personal development. I, I was curious on how you'd answer that because that, you know, for me, I will spend as much money as I can possibly spend to shorten the gap between where I am and where I want to go. And I think a lot of people that maybe are newer entrepreneurs or newer business owners, or maybe they're in that six figure, maybe even low seven figure range that are wanting to go to that next level, they're the ones that are holding themselves back because they're trying to they're holding on to their wallet so tight of like, I've made some money and like, I don't want to give it away. Like I've gotten to this point and it's like, they get in this, you know, stage of like, it's almost like they, they become their own worst enemy where they're holding their growth back because they're not investing into themselves. You know, it's like, there's, I look at like, and I, I allocate for this on a personal level where I allocate a percentage of my income for education and investing in me. So I can continue to grow my leadership skills or whatever my constraint is currently, like whatever I don't know enough about or skill set wise or wherever I need to grow, I have to invest in something that's going to help me get there faster because there's only two ways to learn something, which is, you know, they call it the two M's. It's your, your mentors or your mistakes. Your mentors will literally shave months or years off of the learning curve and your own mistakes you just have to go through those months or years of pain and suffering, plus the money that you didn't earn from the increase that you didn't get. So it's like, yeah. And, and people don't think about that enough, I don't think. That right there is solid advice. One thing, I mean, you can, you can go and get theoretical about everything. You can read all the books, you know, see the shelf back there. Um, but you cannot read a network. Right? You cannot read into a network. You cannot read into a power team. You cannot like we, we're in the people business, regardless of what you're doing. We have to get out there and have conversations. And when we have conversations, we end up collaborating. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that you're not gonna get by you know just sticking in your own you know staying in your own little bubble. I mean, collaboration really has been the thing that that one, it forces me to hold space. Right. If I OK, if I'm collaborating with somebody, let's say you and I get into, you know, you know, some type of a business or a, a venture partnership or something. Now I have to hold that space because, I mean, I'm collaborating with you. It's not just me. And, oh, if I don't feel like doing it today, I'm not going to do it. Uh, you know, it's like, no. OK, I'm, like we have an agreement. Now I, got, I have to hold that space right for you and me. And, and your partner does the same thing. So I feel like it, it forces you to grow in so many different ways when you're putting yourself in, you know, that type of that type of. Um, I feel like intentional in inadequacy is kind of like the, the phrase there, but uh, because you're sitting at tables and yeah, sometimes it can be intimidating. Uh, hell, in, in a week and a half, I'm going to be interviewing um, Kim Kiyosaki on the stage at the Family Mastermind. And, and like that kind of stuff, I grew up, you know, reading their books, 
you know, that type of stuff. And, 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 um, and it's, it's nerve wracking, right? You, you best believe that I'm going to walk away with some golden nuggets on my end. You know what I mean? And, and it's part of that growth. If you don't put yourself out there intentionally, go to mentors, go to masterminds, find meetups, um, getting in, in, in spaces that are going to, you know, force you to hold that space as a leader, as an entrepreneur, and that, uh, more importantly, that habit of growth, it's going to take you forever to get wherever you want to get. It's, I think, just people don't know what they don't know. And so, you know, hopefully those that are listening to this right now, you know, if you're, if you're considering, you know, going to, and I'm not even saying like paid stuff, like, yes, you know, the, the fastest way is paying to cut and shortcut your way to your next result. If you actually, you know, or joining something that's going to help help you with your specific business. But like, just like you're talking about, like networking, there's free meetups in cities all over the US. There's free events that you can go to. There's very affordable events that you can go to to find these people as well. And then, you know, Facebook, there's lots of Facebook groups that have, you know, maybe there's a similar interest that you have for your business. Like you can go and find people to connect with. And, you know, I, I think to that point of, you know, getting around bigger thinkers, you know, it goes back to that, you know, you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with, that you're talking to the most, like your health starts to become similar, your wealth becomes similar, the, the things that you do day to day. And, you know, so if you're listening and you think about the five people closest to you, those friendships, those relationships, you know, what, what does their income look like? What does their health look like? What do their relationships look like? You know, it's like that's, that's usually a pretty good indicator for you to identify, like, this is where you're heading, and are you happy with that result or are yeah, you not? It's in alignment not, with the, the type of uh, the lifestyle that you want. I mean, that's, that's a yeah. big question that you have to answer honestly. Real quick, I'm going to share the story, right? But, like, the first real organic, you know, style type mastermind that, that I went to, and I know you went to, came from an idea or a decision that um, Brandon Simmons made. Uh, he decided to throw a whole bunch of people in a room, uh, and he calls me up one day. I was like, bro, I, I'm going to get a, a, you know, a whole bunch of investors from the Valley in a room, and, and we're going to call it the Go-Giver Mastermind. We're just you know, going to mastermind about what it's working for everybody. And it's like, wait, wait, like you want to ask people like, what their marketing you know, is like and what their operations are like, and you, like everybody shares? Like, yeah, and I'm thinking in my head, this is the limiting beliefs, right? I'm thinking in my head, like, we're all competitors, dude. Like, like I don't think people are going to be open. I'll go because it's you, and, like, we work together for years. So I went, and I show up, and that's where I start, you know, that's where I meet you. Know, you. I met Pace. I met Jamil. I met uh, Evil and Bash. And, like, so all this, this entire group of, of pe like, peers right we just sat down at the table it was like oh and we started sharing we just started putting stuff on the on on on, on the air and that was not a paid group right so oh. so the point i'm trying to make is like there's i feel like there's there's a stigma anytime we say masterminds like oh you gotta pay you know thirty fifty thousand dollars or you gotta pay a mentor and whatnot um it's gonna help you like i, I mean the the uh, i feel like as you scale up you're gonna you know you gotta pay to play right it's just yeah. the nature of the beast that's one thing i learned or you go slower. Um, yeah. It's, it's your choice on that. Right. But if it's not, like, if you don't have the ability or the resources for that yet, like, put together your own, your own group. Like, go, go, through the, go through the effort of doing that and become a leader in that space. I mean, it's, it's, it's a decision away. It truly is. And, uh, and I mean, the, the stuff that comes out of, you know, things like that and, and having that value-add mentality and that impact mentality is, is, dude, it's magic, if you ask me. It definitely is. And, you know, it's just getting around those rooms. And, I, you know, it's like whenever I leave rooms like that, it's like I feel like my brain is just buzzing with ideas and just like this, like, you know, f fast moving energy of just, you know, new thoughts that weren't necessarily there or new new frameworks or new concepts that, you know, I, I could think about situations differently from those. And so it's so it's so powerful. Anytime you walk away or I walk away from a, from a from a meeting, you, you know, whatever. Right. And I'm thinking, man, I got to do this, 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 and this. That's my think getting bigger. I mean, that's how I learned to recognize it. Anytime it's like you walk away from a, from a conversation, from a meeting, uh, heck, I mean, we sat down. I sat down with you not too long ago, and you walked me through, through this whole process, and, and I had a bunch of questions for you. Uh, when we walked away from that, I was like, I got to do this, this, and this. That's the think getting bigger, right? So constantly working on that kind of stuff, uh, I mean, it becomes you know, part of the ritual, I guess you know, as, as entrepreneurs, but it's incredible, man. I feel like it's, it's easy to, to just, you know, dig your head on, in, 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 in the ground and, and put the work in and, you know, not look at your surroundings or not reach out for help when needed. And I, I, I struggle with that. I mean, to be completely honest too, is like, oh, I like, I don't want to, I don't want people to see me that I can't 
figure it out by myself. Uh, and when I got over that sense of ego that wasn't serving me at all, uh, it's when I started moving faster. It's when collaboration started happening, and even the team, like the team that I that I that I was able to put together after that, totally different. I mean, just the culture within the team, it's totally different, and and uh, you know, it works. You know, it's really coming from a place of like, you know, not have not living in your ego. You know, being able to ask for help and. I think that's something as just men in general, I think men have a harder time asking for help, you know, because we're like, you know, men want to be macho and like, I, you know, I can figure this thing out and, you know, I know what to do. And the thing I've realized and the more I lean into this, I'm like, man, the more I learn, the more I learn that I don't know. And I just, there's such a big world of things that I don't know that it's just like, I just always have to be a student and I always have to find, you know, ways that, you know, to continuously learn and, you know, it's like having like that childlike curiosity is something that I've always just try to keep up. You know, it's like, I don't know everything. I'll never know everything. And the more I do learn, the more I realize there is to learn. And that's where I have to keep. Because if we go, you know, there, I think I've experienced this in like my early, early 20s when I was like 21, where I thought I knew everything. And, you know, because business was working well in my first, you know, venture in network marketing. And then when that fell apart, it was like this ego death of like, I didn't even know that I didn't know. And so it kind of like opened this, you know, can of worms for me where I'm like, man, for the rest of my life, I just need to remain a student. No matter how well things are going or know how, how bad things are going, I need to be a curious student and always be learning. <laughs> I feel like we find peace in this, this uh, absurd sense of security and the fact that like we're going to figure it out, right? <laughs> it's part of reaching out, man. It's part of, of I mean, we're a collective, dude. Like, it doesn't matter what you're doing, where you're at, you know, what kind of business you have. At the end of the day, we are a collective. We are a society, and we're connected somehow, some way, right? So so helping you, you helping others, like, it always finds a way back. I mean, it's just, I don't know how to explain it, but it just I just know for a fact that's how it works. So I was doing, I, I, you know, I launched the business because I was chasing the dollar. That's why I, I built a transportation business. And then I hated transportation, so it was in my, like, like I don't want to be doing this forever it's just like there was no purpose be, you know and and like really being fulfilled right so yeah. I got into into real estate which was you know transactional very very much transactional at the beginning of it I got exposed to the student side and the coaching side through Sean Terry I started to see how like you know something that we do even for us right on the business can have a ripple effect and can change somebody's life and that started giving me like a the, the first taste of of purpose and what that looks like what that feels like and fulfillment it was just different it was like a different way of man i, I like this but it's i like the money but i like this part better and that evolved into empowering entrepreneurship for me. So everything that I do on a daily basis in all my businesses leads to empowering entrepreneurship from the brokerage to the wholesaling business with my employees and, and you know, the cash buyers and, and you know, everybody I work around with uh, to the coaching, of course. It's just like it's all organic and, and organically connected, but it leads to that one thing that uh, at the end of the day is empowering entrepreneurship. The podcast we're doing right now is empowering entrepreneurship. I just love that. And and, and the the thing that I think about, and this is where I've been personally making more transitions is, you know, I was sitting with my coach. This is probably, I don't know, this was maybe summer of last year. And I was sitting with them and we were talking through just like the things like the things that give me the most joy in what I do and the things that, you know, kind of drain me. And, you know, we we're just kind of going through that exercise. And, you know, we kind of identified like all of the things that I love about what I do happen to be around like what you're saying is, you know, it's like having an impact on other people and their businesses and like seeing what that then means for them and the results that then they get and, you know, seeing people's, you know, light bulb go off and, you know, the change that they make that then goes and, you know, helps them make more money and, you know, change their life. And obviously I have a few different businesses and I'm in this stage now where I'm looking at selling a couple of the, the different ones that take more of my time and going more into, you know, like I have, you know, with the skill with pros community and, and working with business owners and helping them scale more is where more of my energy wants to go. I'm fine financially where I can do all the things that I want to do. And now I'm just like craving more of where do I get the most energy in the work that I do? And it's seeing that light for other people, which is why I'm doing this podcast too. It's like we could have a platform to give, give insight to, uh, to those people that are on that same journey, trying to go to that that next level. And so it's, 
it's interesting, you know, it's like that. And I'm sure it's similar for you. It's like that. There's a lot of purpose in that. And there's a lot of uh, joy that comes from seeing the growth in other people. You, you said you, you said my favorite word a couple of times, which is joy. We have um, indicators like we have KPIs, right? We have metrics for business and all kinds of stuff and bells and whistles. Um, usually it's easy to ignore the kind of stuff that that are evident uh, um, you know, signs or signals for us. Joy is one of the simplest things to pursue. So, so th- I, I came to to this a while back, but I was thinking, like, when I started thinking about purpose, when I started thinking about, you know, what's the the higher calling, or, or okay, cool, I feel like good, you know, on the financial side, and 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 everything's you know stabilized, and I'm growing little by little, so the path looks great. But like, what's 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 that purpose? And purpose can feel super heavy, right? If you sit down and and try to I don't know eat you know soup and think about purpose, like it's gonna be a tough thing, right? Yeah. And um, I don't know why I must be hungry, but <laughs> but it's it's gonna be like a tough thing to to process, right? Because it's a big thing. Like we're always evolving, we're dynamic beings. So I know that my purpose right now uh, stands uh, as you know empowering entrepreneurship. I don't know what that's gonna be in 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 five years, ten years. Maybe different. May, may turn into something else, which is fine. But one thing I do know is that if I follow joy, if I follow, if I count my smiles, man. At the end of the day, this is how I win, right? Like, did I go to bed and did I smile, you know, more than I, I frowned today? Um, did I had, you know, the, the greater percentage of a day, was I enjoying, you know, what I was doing? Was I having a good time? Did I, like, did I have good conversations? Did I feel good, right? We have all those indicators, and I feel like if we pay attention, it can become a super clear path, right, to whatever our purpose is going to turn into. Um, so it's, it's not that it's... it's I th- it may be difficult to find the, uh, you know, right out of the gate to find your purpose and find, you know, like, okay, like the thing that you want to do forever. But it's not that difficult to find joy, like you mentioned. So follow that. Like, count as miles. I'm curious. Have you read the book, The Gap and the Gain? Gap? No. It's a really good one. Gap um, and the Gain? Had, yeah, Gap and the Gain. Same author of Who Not How, if you've read that one. Yeah, I love that one. So my coach had me read this one. And, you know, now I've, it's it's an exercise that I do and I have to keep up on consistently it's hard to come up with like well what does success mean or like what does success mean for me or like who's successful versus not successful and you know one of the exercises that had me doing that book is like write out like what being successful means and you know I'll read just a few of these it's like I got like 15 things on here so I'm not gonna read all of them but you know I I wrote out for those that are you know watching the the video version of this but i wrote out basically at the top of this paper i know i'm being successful when and just you know some of the things that would be true for me to know okay yeah that is success like one of the first things is like uh, my passive income is greater than my personal living expenses uh another is you know i only work on companies that i'm excited to work on i only work with people that are inspired excited happy and growth oriented i consistently exercise on a weekly basis I will only take on projects and companies that align with keeping the peace in my life that I currently have. And, you know, I have more on there too, but it's like defining and that for me has helped kind of align my thoughts. And it's also like my decision filter too, because one of the mistakes that I've transparently made over the last probably year and a half is saying yes to projects and and other companies that I probably should have said no to. And that, you know, it's a long, it's a long repercussion of working through these deals to then eventually, you know, exit out of certain deals or whatnot. Right. And so, you know, it's this whole thing of like with money, it's like, you can never have enough of what you don't need. And so, you know, it's like just chasing, growing other, you know, certain companies or, you know, chasing revenues and these things. And for what? It's like, I, regardless of some of those things that you do, it's like your, if your life isn't going to change, it's like, what are we doing? Like, why am I doing this to myself? You know, it's like, it's almost kind of, I just look back and I'm like, what what were you thinking, Cody? Why were you deciding to do this? You know? (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's easy. Well, I mean, you have that achiever, you know, um, chromosome too. So, so it's like, we're going to go, you know, heavy and full speed ahead on, on, you know, things that we tackle. And unless, you know, something checks us out of that, that state, it's like, it's easy to get caught up in that. For example, I can, sometimes I'll get into work mode and I'll tell my wife, like, oh, I'm working on this thing. This thing is, is like, it's going to, like, it's going to pull, it's going to take my mind. Like, it's going to, like, it's going to pull me into work mode. 
So when I do that, I mean, at this point, we've been together forever, and she understands that she, like, she will probably more than likely have to come into my office, pull me out, feed me something, and then like throw water on my face, or you know, and, and just give me that counterbalance, right? And, and like, we, I feel like we, we all gotta find, you know, something that 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 checks, you know, puts us on check at, at least, right? For example, my kids. I mean, they're like once I get home, it's practically impossible, right, to work from home because Diego comes into the office, Alejandro, you know, has something else going on, and and I, I used to, I was like, oh man, I got to do stuff, and then the kids, but it's a blessing, it truly is. Why? Because I have all day to work on stuff. I have to <laughs> disconnect. I have to live, right? And and I feel like to uh, once I once I got a taste of that, and and just you know, I became cognizant. That there's different, you know facets of life different you know buckets of life that we have to you know put water into uh, you know the relationship the health the the personal growth the business the the you know all all those i mean it, it's it's almost a a dance right because we we we're never balanced like we're never right in the center of that circle where everything's watered and perfect yeah like that i, I don't know that space personally yeah uh, I don't i've heard about, about it so but we're either like super hard at work now i'm super hard at vacations now i'm super you know with the, you know whatever but it's always a dance like counterbalancing dance and and Honestly, man, truthfully, I feel like that became salt and pepper, man. I, I, I like living that way. It's never the same thing. It doesn't get boring. And when I get back to, to business, like it's refreshed. And I used to hit that uh, barrier of diminishing results quite a bit. I mean, I would just go hard, hard, hard. And then next thing you know, it's like I'm still going hard, but I'm not going to make any progress. You know, that type of stuff. But having the level of clarity that you're able to create with, you know, going through exercises like that. I mean, I feel like that's where it's at. It, it it tells you what to do and what not to do, what to ignore and, and what to pursue further. Yeah, and, and I think sometimes when we don't get clear, we end up, and, and I've found this uh, multiple times in business over the years, is like we end up building the business in a way that we're like, why am I why am I doing this or why did I set it up like this? Like, what, <laughs> how, what, is this? how the heck did I, yeah like how did this happen? Then you know it's like this whole thing of like point the finger. It's like oh my team you know did this and it's like well you're the knucklehead who hired them. You know that's another thing what one of my coaches loves to tell me and you know and I'll vent to him about you know a team member or something and he's like he's like there's the good news is you know you brought him on and the bad news <laughs> is you brought him on. So what are you gonna do about it? And I'm like. Yeah. Oh, Dang it, you know, you're right. <laughs> I, I have um I have three um principles I guess I run um off of and, and they're across, you know, businesses and, and personal too. But it's uh, one, the first one is uh, radical transparency. So I'm always having transparent conversations with employees, with clients, and everybody. Like it is what it is. At the end of the day, right? I mean, it, it becomes too much work to sugarcoat stuff. Uh, and I feel like having a logical approach, uh, you know, in a conversation about stuff, will get rid of seventy percent of of the the bad energy that can come from from something, right? So catching it early and, and being radically transparent. And the second one is extreme ownership came straight from the book. It's like, all right, cool. If it up, if it's up to, if it's going to be, it's up to me. And, and, you know, this is my lane for my acquisition guy. Like my team, you know, now they see things the same way. Right. So you won't find like, this is one thing I, I love about the team. You won't find my team pointing fingers. I was like, Oh, it's, it's because we didn't get it from, from this, but was it something that you needed? Yeah. Okay, cool. Like <laughs> extreme ownership. And, and then uh, the third one is, is people who are profits, like never screw somebody else up. But, you know, to make an extra buck. We are in business, don't get me wrong. So it's not like we're going to bend over backwards and not make money. Yeah. But there's lines, right, that you just don't cross. So so I feel like having having a set of principles and, and, and uh, making it simple for people to think about that, like it gives you the cultural awareness, right, of, of how we operate from both a personal standpoint and then what's, what's, what's allowed within your business. I, I, I used to think they were just, um, you know, cool punchlines or – or oh, it's going to make for a nice little frame, <laughs> you know, that we can hang in the office. But but if you take that kind of stuff to heart, it's like taking that clarity that you created through your exercise and then putting it, rolling it right into your business. No, and it totally makes sense. And it's like, you know, like you said, it's those values. And that's where I was talking about, too. It's like earlier was giving the team the you know freedom to do what they need to do but it's like but within these this infrastructure of values like these values must be followed of how we behave on the way there one final question that i have for for you for the business owner that's listening and they do 
want to get to a million plus a year and revenue. And I just, this is a constant conversation that I feel like I'm having when people like DM me or, you know, we're just talking to business owners trying to scale is they went been solopreneur. They hired some people, they fired them, they hired some people, they fired them and they throw their hands up and they're like, if you want it done right, you just got to do it yourself. And you know, for, for that person that has struggled with that, any words of wisdom that you would give them on, you know, successfully getting, you know, team members into their business and, you know, where they're able to actually make a difference, like maybe whether it's mistakes that you made that you'd recommend that they just need to work through or any mindset stuff that you'd recommend or books that you'd recommend to help that person, you know, one, still have faith that people are great and they can get great people in their business. But, you know, so that take that action and, keep moving it forward three things uh the i mean I, i'm big on behavioral profiles i'm an organizational psychologist and i mean that's that's my my background right so so when i hire i'll, I'll design the uh, the role i'll figure out the, the behavioral strengths that somebody needs to have for that role not that it's going to be fail proof but the attrition really does uh you know um get reduced it gets mitigated so you have you know when you hire properly for certain roles so you're gonna have people last longer and you know when they come in dial in your onboarding process i mean I mean, that's huge from the point of you know selection to I mean are you hiring because they had a pulse and and, and you needed somebody <laughs> you know that you're all yeah. Here. yeah exactly or are you being proactive about it and okay I know that my fourth quarter is the busiest quarter so in quarter in Q2 you start you know to to put out feelers for people who may you know you may need to come in and bring in you know at that point right so that's part of your onboarding process uh, interview process and selection process when we have issues with employees it's either going to be an attitude problem or a training problem I mean, it's really what it's come down, you know, for me, what I've been able to I recognize. always say skill or will, skill yeah, or will. Exactly, That's exactly. It. So if it's a training problem, we can fix that, right? And maybe I'm screwing around on the training. Like, okay, I'll own that and I'll better training. I'll sit you down with, you know, with me and then we'll go through it because your attitude is right. But if it's an attitude problem, um, one, they're not willing to learn. They're not just clicking with the culture of the, of the business. Maybe their alignment is different. They're not engaged. 37% of the workforce w was actively engaged in their jobs. The rest of them were just kind of like showing engaged? up and doing the bare okay. minimum to to like get a paycheck. So engaged meaning is like, oh, I'll do my job and then get excited and go the extra mile if I if I have to. Like that's you know the kind of the kind of stuff that entrepreneurs do on a regular basis. Yeah, only thirty percent of the workforce. Uh, so, anyways, but um, but it's it, that's definitely an attitude problem, right? So so I mean, be aware of that. I mean, you know. We, we get to grow through, through this process. That means also having difficult conversations. It also you know, means being honest you know, with other people whether or not they're a fit. And, and uh, you know, sometimes it's not the ideal thing you know, to have you know, a, a difficult conversation with somebody else, but we have to do those. And, and the sooner that we knock those things out of the way, the sooner the rest of the team you know, is going to be better. So those are uh, you know, three, three things that I look at. Yeah, it makes, makes perfect sense to me. And, you know, to your point, uh, the, that final point on, you know, having those difficult conversations, you know, I, I just had to let go of someone, you know, one of our higher level roles not too recently ago. And those are hard conversations. And like, knowing that one, this is unfortunate, but you know, it is what it is. But, you know, the, uh, it doesn't, I don't know, for me, it never gets better, you know, that having conversations where I have to fire someone or let someone go. It's like, it's always painful. Like my gut, you know, turns when I have to have the conversation and it's, I just, what, what those conversations are and that's, you know, but it's part of being a leader. And if you're going to have a team and you want a successful company, you gotta, you gotta lead people well. And that means coaching them up or coaching them out because if you keep bad people, it's also going to hurt the rest of your team, you know, and that's, that's also a, a problem. So, yes, sir. So, so Raphael, where, where can people go to find you? Um, if you, you know, if they want to check you out, whether it's YouTube or Instagram, obviously we'll drop in, in the show notes as well. Uh, but where do you want people to find you? Um, I'm really active on, on social IG, uh, mainly. I mean, I'm on, on Facebook and, and the rest of them as Rafael Cortez CEO. So, uh, but yeah, if somebody wants to reach out, um, Rafael at Rafael Cortez CEO is my handle. So shoot me a DM and, and spark up a conversation there. So, awesome, yeah. awesome. Well, thank you so much for hanging out, and, and you know, I know my pleasure, bro. There are ton tons of great nuggets on here today, and you know, some things that you know take take me back through these different stages that you know we we all have to grow through and. Yeah. So appreciate you being here and for everyone else, we'll see you in the next episode.